Our show wouldn't exist without you listening. But if you want more information on how to become a guest, how to recommend a guest, or just to stay in touch, go to flippinthelid.com. We'll see you there. And for you to be able to shorten your own curve to learning by tapping into the collective wisdom of our guests. Today, we've got a really special individual. And though I've not spent much time with her, I can tell you that in the two minutes that I had a conversation with her, the energy and the connection is strong. This woman is a force. She's a heart. And it's very obvious how she shows up in the world. You know, as Europe's number one self-mastery expert, a, a, a woman who came from Zimbabwe, who's lived in Switzerland and all over the world, shared the stage with some of the largest names in the business world and in the motivational world. She's spent over 10,000 hours meditating and teaches so many other people how to access deeper connection with themselves and connection to the source so they can live their best lives. Mahima, I am so excited to have you here today. Brian, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here as well. It's always exciting to hear someone reading your bio and thinking, oh my God, they're talking about me. What, what, what? <laughs> I am yeah. um, still catching up with all the uh, beauty that's manifested. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty incredible, right? And I, you know, what's interesting is I didn't even read your full bio. I just pulled out a couple of the highlights and I read the full bio. I'd still be talking because it's extensive and it's real and it's deep. Um, and so Thank that's you. why I try to trickle in a little bit of what I see in you as a human. Because though we haven't spent much time together, you're a human sitting here in front of me. And so that's how I've experienced you so far in a brief moment. But who are you in your words? Ooh, I am playful, I'm creative, I'm intense, I'm deep, um, I'm expansive. I love to share the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of the soul um, with anyone who's ready to, to listen and experience. I'm all about the experience of being yourself, um, doing the inner growth work, because I think that humans we desperately in need of connection right. with ourselves and others. And I am just so um, honored or blessed or lucky, some might say, uh, that with 23, I, I got to have a transformational experience that changed the trajectory of the path that I was walking on. And the trajectory of the path that I was walking on, um, had I not changed my mindset, would have involved poverty, uh, probably some kind of disease or disease, um, uh, definitely screwed up relationships like on a major level because I was totally screwed up um, emotionally, uh, sexually depraved and broken um, because of things that had happened to me as well um, in my childhood and also just on the conditioning of what we are conditioned to think around sex. So sex, money, relationships, everything was a big problem, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then because of this major transformational shift that I had, I was able to start transforming myself, healing myself, and just getting my life on track. So that's, that's who I am. I'm just a person who was um, lucky enough to discover inner peace, at a young age and decided to run with it and go deeper. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for how you answered that question too. It, it, it was very specific to who you are and didn't integrate what you do at all. And that's a rarity <laughs> in the way most people answer that question. And so I appreciate you taking us there. I really also appreciate the depth of your ability to center into the experience of life uh -huh. and experiences and what that looks like. Um, you know, you talk about having healing and awakening at a young age, right? 23 is a relatively young age. And you briefly hit on the path that you were on and the trajectory that it was. But before we talk about the transformation and the way that you got there, take us back to the beginning. What did the first 23 years look like? What led to Boom. some of the places that you realized you had to escape and give us your experience through that time, what were you thinking? What were you feeling? How were you moving through the world as a, as a young woman? Such a great question and the story is long. So because of the time that we have here, I need to, I need to catch, you know, let's say mm -hmm. the main story. So think about 
1971. I'm born in Zimbabwe, right? Born to uh, a, a, a young woman who fell pregnant probably sooner than she wanted to, okay? okay. Um, with a, a, a young man who had kids sooner than he probably wanted to. And uh, them being brought up in a culture, I call it a culture of hate, because yeah. in Zimbabwe back then, there was apartheid, right? So they're, they're, they're trying to deal with, you know, being young adults, having kids, and, 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 and just like the, 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 the stress of the time that they were living in, where there was segregation, there was uh, colonization, there was um, not good opportunities for them as black people inside of their own country. So a little bit messy, right? And then, um, and then you know, at one point, my, we had to go and stay with my grandmother, my sister and me, because my mom couldn't afford to have us with her. And my dad deserted her, which I think is a typical story um, uh, back in the day of men having children and maybe just disappearing. I don't think, I think that that story was more than we realize. Okay? Oh, yeah, I agree with um, that. And my father has disappeared like till today. So I still do not have any clue where he is. I saw him last when I was three or four years old. Wow. Um, and uh, and so, and then growing up in, um, you know, I, I, I love school. I love, uh, I was good at school and um, I had opportunity to, to, to start modeling at a young age, started earning my own money. So some, some cool things started to happen to me uh, from a young age, getting a little bit of independence from, uh, from the situation. So being brought up as Roman Catholic, you know, which was tough with the, hey. the uh, you needed to go to confession. You had needed to go to church every Sunday. They, you needed to sing in Latin. And I just didn't vibe with the whole thing yeah. and felt extremely uncomfortable. And it was, you know, our family was highly religious. So we kind of forced to go. It wasn't like Go if you want to. It was like get out, get out. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 um, and then my mom got together with this guy, uh, Frank, and Frank ended up being, you know, inappropriate to my sister and me. And I was eleven, yeah. and my sister was, uh, you know, um, no, sorry, my sister was twelve. I was eleven, and and so at sixteen, I moved out of home because I couldn't handle that anymore. Yeah. I had to leave school, right? Uh, and and start working by myself. So long story short, I ended up married at a young age, like I was sort of like 21, but I already met my husband at 18. Uh -huh. um, he had all of this uh, beautiful life, like he was from Switzerland. Um, he was 10 years older than me. I started traveling and having all of this lovely stuff, like nice house, uh, swimming pool, jacuzzi, that, but I was miserable. I was just miserable. Yeah. I'd never been taught to be peaceful. I never been taught to be purposeful or happy or, um, you know, I just had small thinking, um, you know, from all the, let's say, negative influences of, of my childhood, I was trapped inside of that small, um, you know, a traumatized person. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that that was my, that that was what was happening. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. That's right. Right. Um, and then life uh, took me to India after my divorce. And I just immediately, the first day that I was in this meditation, I had a transcendental experience where my mind completely became quiet, just, just like that. Like, And I was completely skeptical. I was not looking for inner peace. I was not, oh, please. Yeah, and it's a long story to tell how I got to India, but I believe that there are things that just happen to you in life. It's part of your journey. It's part of your path. Like me meeting Frank, my mom's sort of abusive boyfriend. That's part of what was yeah. meant to happen to me. Or mm -hmm. else, why would it happen, right? Um, so I think there are things you can influence with your mind and 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 your choices. And there are things that are just part of your journey, part of you know your 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 trip here on planet Earth. And me going to India is part of my destiny. I was like, because it's so random that a girl from Zimbabwe yeah. at my age would even consider, this is back in 1993. Really? They didn't have internet back then. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to think of this. There was no internet. There was no, like, like, like the world is open. The world has become such a small place now. You can kind of visit it right. before you even go there. 
So it was super random that I ended up in an ashram in India. And, uh, and I went there because uh, some person told me you can live for very cheap in India. And I was like, that sounds like a good idea. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and they also said to me, you're very messy and it would give you an opportunity to work on yourself. But I didn't really understand what they meant when they said that. So I w that wasn't the motivation for me to go there. Yeah. So I'm sitting this first ever meditation. I'm starting to center and ground myself. Just like that, I start to have this powerful experience of inner peace. I found meditation like a dolphin that's been stranded on the beach yeah. and then people find it. It's still, it's on its last breath and then they just push it slowly back yep. into the ocean and the dolphin <gasps> comes back to life and starts swimming. That was me when I found meditation. Yeah, I found my calling, I found my spirit, and I just could sit for hours just absorbing and learning. And I knew already then that I was going to do something with this beautiful gift. So that is, uh, I hope, wasn't too much of a long story, but no. I hope it gave people enough, um, you know, to chew on to understand my background a little bit and, you know, how I got to this uh, new life that I created yeah. after I met Zimbabwe. No, I mean, I think you, you caught us up pretty well and you hit the high points for sure. And when I say high points, that doesn't mean they were high points in your life, but they were high points in the story, right? They could be low points in the life. But, you know, you also embedded so many little nuggets throughout your story, right? Each, each one of the periods of your life, you wrapped the answer with a lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. And every period as you transition through, you talked about where you were and what you learned before you stepped into the next phase. And so yes. there's a number of things that I want to actually pick out from what you talked about. But the, but the first one that it's just it's like vibrating in me right now, just because of how you did it, the gasp for air Damn. in the picture Damn. that you talked about with the dolphin. Yes. You know, the visual on mm -hmm. that is significant. And you know, we, we work with individuals who often are, have not dealt with and been able to identify and remove the trash from their past that's keeping them stuck, right? And so often they identify with the feeling of heaviness and the inability to breathe. And, you know, of all of the organs that keep us alive, that are essential, that will work without us, meaning they will operate to make us and keep us alive the only one that we actually also have influence and control over, which is also what you talked about in terms of the influence in our life is our breath. And that's not a coincidence. Yes. The power of the breath and being able to use it to connect and center ourselves is incredible. So you talk about meditation, but the visual with your gasp for air brings it full circle. Tell me when you first realized that you could breathe without effort. Uh, so, uh, it's such, you know, the, like, so that first experience, for those of you who have never meditated, you need to understand, I was in a hall full of like a thousand people and I'd never consciously experienced inner peace. I, I think inner peace is our birthright. And so we're born with it. And I think we drift in and out of consciousness and awareness of that aspect of ourselves, which is our soul. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you think about a beautiful day on the beach where it's all perfect and you, you everything's quiet and you just feel one with the ocean, one with nature, you have, this is a moment where you're connected to your soul and you're just at peace and one with right. everything around you, right? Now we drift in and out of these moments where beautiful things happen. But that first meditation that I was in was the first time I became conscious of myself and, and this part of ourselves that you can call whatever you want, but I love to call it the soul, the spirit, right? The part of us that came into this world with nothing and that's going to continue the world with mm -hmm. nothing, right? So the essence of our being. So in that meditation, thousand people yeah. in that hall closed my eyes and I started to experience this, this, the self, right? And it, and, and it, it, it felt like, like, like emptying, yeah. stopping. It felt like the world stopped 
and everything was fine. Okay, like 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 there was a hit of the pause button, and I just sat there and I sat there and I sat there. I didn't know how to meditate, so first I was looking around. I was checking people out. I saw them closing their eyes. I started to close my eyes. I saw people breathing more deeply. I started to breathe more deeply. And literally, um, I think like two or three hours went by, and then I opened my eyes. The hall was empty. Right. People had left, and I was still so much in this experience that I continued sitting there. It was my first day in the ashram. I didn't know what to make of this. I was like, "What? What has just happened to me?" Right? I didn't know what. I didn't have anyone to to turn to and go. What? Okay, so I just went to bed. I went to bed and I fell asleep immediately. I was exhausted. The next morning I woke up and I literally sat and started meditating. I sat for two hours in my first solo journey, right? I just sat on my bed and I felt this peace and I felt this well-being. And then I, I was like, what has happened to me? So I went to the this ashram and I started to talk to people about what's going on here. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I stood last night and, they, and, you know, of course, people start to explain to you like everything's fine, the school and all of that. So I would say I instantly discovered something amazing. But what was more interesting than that, I think, was my decision to keep riding that mm -hmm. wave. I think experiencing what I just said isn't, it isn't uh, complicated. I, I know many people come to our sessions and are blown away yeah. with how well they can feel in just a few moments of being guided to mm -hmm. chillax, yep. just breathe and be here in this present moment. Yes, feel yourself. It, it, like we all know this, so we feel it. Now, you can open that portal, but it's what you do with that open portal that's going to make the life-changing yeah. trajectory, right? Yeah. I, I've seen people come into these experiences and go away, right? Go away like, oh, that, that was nice. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. And it was, a, yeah, um, not only in my sessions, but also in the sessions with the teachers that I was with. Yeah. And others, like myself, came and stayed and went I need to know everything there is about this space, this self, this soul. So that is when you learn how to breathe with ease, is when you have the portal open and then you decide to continue the journey yeah. for yourself. Yeah, for yourself, because you just feel it. You feel like this is magical. Whatever this is, I want more of it. Mm. I, I think that's so beautiful. And I think it's 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 interesting because so many people can identify with the experience you brought us into, right? Being connected, you know, whether by the ocean or in that moment of just escaping in your breath. Uh, to your point, I, it's not complicated to get there. Yeah. But it does take intention to stay there. It takes yes. intention to put yourself back in that place. And it takes, you know, effort, awareness, and ownership to be able to step into the fact that when that is hard to do the resistance and interference that exists for many of us. Cause I think that it's amazing how you just had this like transformation and you popped right in. It took me like five years to be able to sit for more than five minutes. <laughs> That's right? amazing. And, and, and then I, it's exponentially grown from there as I've worked with my meditation and consciousness, but, but I was so damaged and so guarded and so armored and so protectionary of a lot of the patterns of my past that I was so blind to it. And, it's a gift at 23 to be able to have this awakening and awareness because you only have 23 years of patterning and unwind versus where I was at, which was, you know, almost 30 by the time I was starting to be able to connect to it. Um, yes. You, I want to take you back to a few things that you really talked about early in your life, because to the point of normalizing things that are more common, you talked about a few things. You talked about religion. And the expectation, and, and I'm going to call it shame, that was associated in almost a forced belief system for you, right? And again, I want to yes. be really clear here. I'm not saying that religion is that for everybody, but at least in the situation for you, that's how you were introduced to it. And so that's how you experienced it early. Yes. You talked about your father not being around, your mother not being able to be present. And so often we talk about in the human experience, our desire to feel safe, protected, seen, understood, and connected. And the second that we don't feel these two, because we don't feel safe and protected, we are all of a sudden going to protect ourselves. We wall up, we start armoring, we start having these beliefs that guide us down this path. You yes. were layered with expectation. You were layered with shame. 
you were layered with societal pressures for a variety of reasons as a black woman living where you were with the economic turmoil that was existing and all yeah. of the toxicity that you described. So what I'm curious about is how did you allow yourself to remove the expectations and just trust and surrender to the flow of life once you were connected? So I think the fact that I decided immediately to stay in India, I remember saying, okay, so there's this thing called enlightenment. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to stay here until I figured it out. Mm. <laughs> That's what I said to myself. And then I proceeded to spend all of my time inside of this ashram, first of all, for six months, but the teacher had already died. And so I was like, oh, I need a light teacher. I need someone in his yeah. body because what is enlightenment? What, like, what is this? I need to understand what people are talking about. So then I went to this other place where there was this other guy and I sat around with him. And all in all, I spent 18 months away, miles away in India from my family and their stories. And there yeah. I completely recreated myself. It's beautiful. Right? I remember having um, the opportunity to heal myself sexually and explore my, mm. you know, sexuality and my, all my ideas yeah. around it. And because there wasn't anyone there, you know, looking at what I was doing and judging me, I could just go yeah. all And out. by the way, there's a lot of people who never get to that place, <laughs> especially in yeah. that topic because of the shame that's connected to it. So thank exactly. you for even being willing to go there and talk about that. Sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt you. Please continue. But that's that was a really critical point. And there mm -hmm. are literally, I mean, there are millions of women still on this planet that have not sexually liberated themselves because of societal pressures, expectations, roles, a whole variety of things. So very exactly. powerful what you just said. Yeah, thank you. But you took me there, Brian. So I appreciate that, yeah. right? Just like asking, how did this happen? Well, you know, being away for yeah. me was the key because yeah. there were only fax machines back there, okay? So nobody could see what I was doing. Nobody could interfere with my process and judge me. So I literally got to redesign my ideas about yeah. me, right? Who am I? Who am I? That's the, the you know, my, my second teacher that was one of the main questions he would talk about every day. So for those of you that, you know, kind of need to understand this process that I went in when I was in India as well, like I called it like I was getting my PhD on how to be happy, right? Yeah. So while other people were studying to become, you know, nurses or accountants or lawyers, I was sitting and observing consciousness. I was learning about human consciousness, yeah, yeah, yeah. what makes us happy, what makes us stuck. How are we creating our own reality? How do our thoughts affect our feelings, affect our actions? So I was doing like a deep study and, and I was the study. I was healing myself. Yeah. Right? So I discovered all these different layers of how, yes, there is a Mahima that is my story. That's my name. That is where the trauma is inside of that aspect yeah. of myself. So I don't deny that. Yeah, but then there's this other aspect of self, right? Which is the soul, the spirit, uh, the God essence, the light, uh, the, the energy, whatever you call it. And when you connect with that, let's call it a greater aspect of self. You can then hold the smaller version of yourself, like say Mahima the, with the trauma, with the you know that needs the sexual uh, healing, that needs the the money mindset training, so she doesn't continue to 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 live a a poor financial reality. Um, the Mahima that you know uh, was messed up from being beaten as a child, and so you know, that creates uh, stuff inside of you. So I could look at this aspect of myself and I could start learning and have more compassion, but I wasn't completely identified with that as me. So this is, we're going deep now. So I hope everyone's I love deep. it. Yeah. So, so therefore I could start. To, so, so for me, it was all about connecting to that yeah. bigger self. And then in that place, I started to the healing process of allowing myself to 
ask powerful questions about my sexuality and act upon situations that could help me get yep. different perspective and actually start to transform and change myself. I started doing things around money, like, uh, you know, like uh, manifesting. I started learning how to manifest abundance without it being about I work and I get money, right? That's one way of getting money. But there's multiple sources in which this yep. amazing universe can support us. Once you start to understand that and tap into it, it's, it's, it's like you're like a magician. It's kind of like miraculous what you're able to, to, to create outside yeah. of the box of what society has told you. This is the way that everything's done. Yeah. So I basically dismantled the old version of myself. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is I, I killed the old version of myself, but slowly, day by day, I just like, you know, kind of didn't give her a, a, a more attention. And then from those ashes was a rebirth yeah. of a new version of me. So you can look at it as dismantling the old version, putting together a new version, yeah, or a death of the old me so that a rebirth could happen. Yeah. So that's what happened. And I spent 18 months before I decided to leave India, go back to Zimbabwe to test drive my enlightenment. Because for me, it was important to know that all of these amazing new feelings, all of these amazing new experiences were my experiences yeah. that I could have anywhere that these two feet and this body was on the planet. I didn't want to leave my yeah, yeah. transformation in India with my teachers and with the community. For me, it was very important to leave and check how do I feel when I'm back home in my, you know, where I was born with the thoughts, the, 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 the conditioning and all of that. So I was excited to go back home. I didn't tell anyone I was coming, Brian. I arrived to my mom's house. I hadn't, no one had seen me or heard from me for like 18 months. And I got to my, um, to my mom's uh, apartment and I knocked on the door. Brian, my mom opened the door, blank face, and said, can I help you? Can I help you? That's my own mother. She did not recognize me. Wow. Okay? <laughs> she didn't recognize me. And we've seen this too when people come on our Oh, yeah. People do transform. I, I, their I, faces I, change. Their bodies change. A different person. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, everything. So yeah. she was like, can I help you? I was like, mom, it's me. And then she just started screaming. She was like screaming. And I was like, ah. I can't believe I didn't recognize you. So I'm back home. I'm like in the zone. I'm meditating. I'm feeling good. I'm learning that, no, I have done this work. I have to, right? I'm looking at the, all the societal limitations and smallness, and, I, you know, and I'm just breaking all of those patterns in front of me. And, and, and after about three or four months, I decided to go back to India um, I spent another eight months in India. Then I traveled. I started traveling around the world. I wanted to visit, you know, I went to Bali. I went to uh, New York. I went to Canada, Vancouver. I started to just be a lot in India. But then I also wanted to go around and visit different cultures because I found it fascinating how even though we all have these different cultures and societal beliefs and values, in the core, we're the same and we want the same yeah. thing. I agree. Right? And so I just loved going around and learning about humans because that's what I feel. I feel like I'm a, I'm a human. Um, uh, I'm, I'm so fascinated with the human consciousness, regardless of where you come from, whether yeah. you're, you know, Asian, African, Italian or whatever. So I just start, started humans and traveled. And then at one point, um, I felt it was clear to me that I was going to teach people what I learned, Amen. right? When my teacher died, the one that was alive in his body, at one point when I was 27, he left his body. And I knew then that was it with that part of my journey. And I wasn't going to go back to India and get another guru. I felt I need to share this with other people because yeah. for me it was fascinating what I was able to create financially, emotionally, spiritually, um, you know, after all of the stuff I, I've been learning. Yeah. So I thought I have to start sharing. And I did. And it just 
was like a wildfire that just grew. People, you know, started to to ask me like, "Hey, can you come here? Can you come there?" And I started being invited everywhere to start to to share this this wonderful message. Yeah, there are so many things that again you embedded in that story, and 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 I'm going to extract a couple of them. I have a little bit of a cheeky question just for clarity because I it's it's you made a comment a minute ago and you laughed at it because you said. You said, yeah, I told myself I was going to remain in India until I had it figured out. And then you left 18 months later. Yeah. Does that mean you had it figured out in 18 months? Absolutely. And I'll tell you why I said really? that. Because yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So I said, I, I said, I'm going to stay in India. What I exactly said is until I understand enlightenment, what is this? What is enlightenment? What are these people talking about? Okay. So here's my understanding of what enlightenment is. For me, enlightenment is not an end destination. Yeah. It is what happened to me on that first day that I was in that ashram in India. Yeah, hey. Okay. Portal opens, you get connected, you know something that you didn't know before. Okay. Yeah, hey. Now, what you do with that enlightenment, that's up to you. Yep. You, go, you have to keep digging there and expanding that connection expand but for me it's not something that's over there happening right. it's only can be in this moment yeah it's only in this moment it's one breath you're one breath away from inner peace all of the time i agree okay yeah and so i, li I literally always say to people you are one breath one moment away that's it i love that because yeah. that's that's the reality it's what's right in exactly. front of us it's the only exactly. thing that's real it's the only thing that's real Exactly. And you know, I think as well, if I'm going to get a little bit controversial, maybe for some people. Go for it. Yeah. I think the idea that they build up this enlightenment thing in India, like there's this guru and he's all knowing and da, 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 blah, 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 whatever they're saying. Okay. And what you're dealing with is a human being. That's right. That teacher is human. Yep. And me spending five years with an Indian guru, I saw the humanity. Oh yeah. I saw the brilliance. I saw the gorgeousness. And that's why he was such a perfect mirror for me. Because it doesn't mean that, you know, your your um your 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 humanness goes away. Okay? It doesn't where would it go to? Yeah. Right? It doesn't so, leave. No. And you you can't fix yourself. You are like a microcosm of the world. Right, it so is. the world has shadow. It has light. It has beauty. It has ugliness. It's, it's everything inside of there, and we are small bits of the world. So I see people trying to fix themselves, and I say, "Listen, you're never gonna be. You're never gonna be fixed. You're never gonna be fixed. You're wasting your energy trying to fix yourself. Yeah. What you need to do is love yourself unconditionally as you are right now in this moment." And now in this moment, and now in this moment, yes. okay, you can improve yourself. Like we can improve the world, right? We can get better ideas. We can stop, you know, trying to tear each other down. Yeah. We can improve things, but there's always going to be shadow and light and all of these, uh, you know, parts of the thing which we, which we say is wrong. Yeah? yeah. It's not good. But is it not good or is it just what it is? Yeah. Right, we interpret it as, and we judge. This isn't good. That is good, bad, and good, and we're very obsessed with it. But yep. the truth is, it just is, right? So, being spending all of this time, those eighteen months that I spent, you know, I did feel like what I got, what I wanted to get, which was the ability to stop my monkey mind from jumping all over the place and telling me. Uh, and, and taking me into pain and suffering. Like I mastered my mind and I was able to say, hey, monkey, sit. Here's yep. a banana, shut it. Yep. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> shut it, okay? Yeah. Because right yeah. now I'm here with myself and I just want to be, I just want to feel expansive. I want to feel safe. I want to I want to be comfortable in my own skin yeah. and just one with the world as it is. So yes, I did spend 18 months training hard every day. I spent I was in more than 5, 6, 7 hours of meditation every day. Yeah, so that's significant. I didn't, you know, I didn't miss around while I you was You could press you decades know. into a year and a half. You did. <laughs> exactly. I mean, truly. It's, it's, I did. <laughs> I appreciate how you answered that question, Mahima, because, uh, you know, again, I, I, I called it out because I wanted clarity because I believed that that was how you were going to answer. 
You know, I believe yeah. there's no final destination, just constant evolution of self, right? Exactly. And every moment is an opportunity to reinvent and evolve and refine and learn and grow and be more and more present. You know, you talk so amazingly about this concept that I describe as being the observer and participant in your life real time, right? You talk about this higher self connection to the source and the universe and 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 how all those things go. I, I think it's really beautiful because... I think that that's when we truly can be present and objective and non-judgmental within ourselves, when we can actually observe the things that are happening, participate in them real time, but have the decoupled ability between our intellectual and emotional narratives that have caused us to believe things historically. You yes. called it like, I just, I like destructed myself. I killed my prior self. I've got a Phoenix bird yeah. tattooed on my right arm because I believed <laughs> I've burned myself into the ash multiple times and reinvented myself. But it's exactly. interesting because there's a slight nuance between the way you describe it and the way I do. And I want to get clarity in your your take and perspective. Okay. I don't feel like I've ever killed my prior self. Mm. I it's feel okay. like my life and the pain from my life caused me through the layers of pain to get associated layers of armor that caused me to hide further and further from who I really was Thank and them. fit more and more into the box of who the world told me to be. Yes. And so for me, as I've burned down and reinvented all that means for me is even how you said it it's like shedding layers right yeah so for me every time i heal a layer of pain i get to shed a coinciding layer of armor that gets me closer to the core of who i am and yes. so for me my process has not ever been killing off my prior selves it's actually been on a journey to reconnect with my most authentic self that existed before the world broke yes right? the human side yes. of me and so can you help me understand this concept of, mm -hmm. of the words that you chose around killing off yourself and why yes. that imagery is so important for you in your evolution? Okay, so, so, the, the, so I think that you need to be willing to fight for your freedom internally. We Damn. think the battle is out there when the war is in here, okay? Bingo. People are fighting inside of their minds all the time right of the emotional states they're fighting with feeling good yep. feeling you know i want to go here but then the mind says go with their fear so so you need to become a warrior and in this warrior state you need to be able to recognize the bs that's happening inside of you and take it down okay <laughs> yeah. however you do however you do, you, you know you do that right obviously having people help you to really? recognize your blind spots. But it isn't like, oh, there's a blind spot. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for helping me to discover this. No, most people- They just judge themselves when they see I'm more aware, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mahima, I love you. Like you are just incredible, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. And I love you too. And I'm just feeling we're so vibing. We're just uh, so much heart and so much passion in this topic. And I'm just enjoying this uh, tremendously. Right. Yeah. So so that is what I mean by, you know, you, you've got to you've got to be willing to to take down your opponent, which is your negative mindset. Yeah. Right. And 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 you've got to be willing to take the sword and fight with yourself and 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 destroy certain things for good. Right. Yeah. So, for example, um, I I had this uh, I had this and, and, and also I want to say I agree with you where there is like um, I see that there's also a death and a rebirth, death and rebirth. This happens several times in a oh, lifetime. Agreed. Yeah. Because the Mahima that was unconscious of herself, didn't know that she was soul, didn't know that she was spirit, didn't know that she could bring things from the invisible to the visible, that she was capable of healing herself sexually, emotionally, yeah. mentally. That, 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 the, the, that person died. I mean, there was a death of that part of me. And then came this new version of myself where I was conscious that, oh my God, there's this whole playing field that I've never played in, right? And then I continued, let's say, and I was with my Indian guru and doing my thing for like seven years. And then there was a death of that aspect of myself. And from that rebirth came the teacher, like, I'm ready to share. I'm ready to start helping yeah. others. I'm ready to hold space and have people challenge me and say, what do you mean? And what do you, yeah. And, and, and so there yeah. was a rebirth, right? And then, and then I met my husband. And so my single life of just, you know, that's gone, that, that Mahima's dead, right? And then came this new one 
inside of this conscious relationship, how do I operate? I learned so much over this 23 years of conscious relationship yeah. about men, women, relationships, sexuality. It's been a huge part of, of my transformation journey as well, right? Um, so, so when I talk about birth and death, I think there's multiple birth, births and deaths inside of your process because of just periods where that is gone. That birth yeah. part of you, you know, that the mahima that that doesn't doesn't know inner peace has gone forever. Yeah. Right now, the mahima that can know more layers of inner peace deeper layers there of we consciousness. Go. This is the ongoing yep. journey. This is where you continue to grow. You know, the Mihima that 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 didn't know how to have an orgasm and didn't build, you know, felt her she was trapped in in, yep. in trauma. She's dead. This woman has opened up. She's multi-orgasmic. Now, is there more layers of orgasm? Is there more layers of pleasure? Yes, there are. And I can't wait to stay in my body and continue untapping. Continue to access shit. all those. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I, I really, really, I have a deep level of respect for how you talk about the, the life and death within our lives. Like, and, and again, your willingness to go to these fringe topics that aren't talked about in so many parts of society that, that are a part of our, all of our healing journey. You know, yes. I know that for myself and I, and you don't know my story. We've not, we've not talked on that. And I'm not going to bore you with, with those details. Cause this is about you today, but I know that for myself, because of a physical trauma that I had as a kid, when I shut off physical pain, because it exceeded my ability to cope, I shut off mental pain, emotional pain and spiritual pain for 20 to 25 years. And I didn't, even know. I was blind. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And, and I literally had conditioned myself to not feel and I was unconsciously suppressing feelings at a rate that I didn't even realize. I mean, it, so I've had all these different awakening moments in it, but I am a big believer that we need to feel in order to heal, right? And we talk about the human self and the cellular memory that exists in so many ways that our bodies react to things that aren't even having to do with what's right in front of us, but how we were conditioned to protect ourselves or hide or escape or aggress in different periods of our life. Your awakening at 23 is great. I'm curious, were you aware of your feelings prior to your enlightenment awakening at 23? Or has your ability to feel and heal been an integration process over the same period of time? And can you just help us understand that component of feeling and cellular memory from your perspective and expertise with consciousness work? Yeah, I love that. Um, I feel I, I feel like I was very disconnected hey. from being aware of myself at all. Like I didn't like I didn't know that I was living in misery. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't, I didn't either, even though it was for years, right? Like I know, I know. No one told me, and I didn't know <laughs> until. I experienced the ecstasy, the bliss, the joy that comes with being Dang. connected to your soul. And that's when the awareness of, oh, oh my God, there, there's another way of operating inside of this body. And then over years, and the journey continues, right? One starts to, to deal with that, you know, with all of that, let's say, unfelt feelings, unexpressed stories, right? And, and you know, it is it is a it's a journey to improve yourself and to feel more and to experience more so that's going to go on i believe until you take your last breath because I agree. you're also experiencing new things like i just turned 52 this year and many pause has been a new experience it it's brought new sensations and so you're constantly learning um, how to keep evolving, right? You're not the same as you were at 22. And people say, yeah, age is just a number, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, you know, it is a number, but it also affects you in certain ways, specifically as a yeah. woman, and I guess as a man too, right? So, you know, when I'm going to be 60, it's going to be very different as when I'm 30, right? So, yeah, I think it's about allowing yourself to, to keep opening up and feeling more, uh, becoming more, but at the same time, you get to that through accepting and loving yourself as you are yeah. right now. 
As soon as you have, you, you have a thought of, I wish I was, blah, 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 you're lost. You, you're going to ego land, yep. right? As soon as you like, oh, I wish I, let's say if you have now, if you have this issue of, you know, we're talking about sexuality, right? Very sensitive topic. And let's say mm -hmm. you're listening to this thinking, I have sexual trauma that I haven't yet healed, right? And so, you, you know, that does not equate that you need to feel, I'll be happy when I've healed that's my right. sexual trauma. And that's what I love to teach people. When you connect to your soul, when you connect to your spirit, you go beyond the limitation of the physical body and the cell memory of the mm -hmm. story. And you, 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 you can experience what I would call making love to the universe, okay? Where all of your heart, all of your energy cells in your body become alive and vibrant and you yeah. feel this massive amount of, of uh, you know, almost orgasmic uh, sensation of yeah. joy that can come from being connected to your soul, right? So everything is uh, amazingly activated when you connect to your soul. Yeah. But then, of course, you have this physical body and the body has its limitations, right? So you can have that more expansive uh, connection of of feeling um, powerful inside of your energy system in the presence of the now, you connect to your soul. And at the same time, you can have limitations in the physical body that block you, right? Mm -hmm. And don't allow you to experience and feel the level of pleasure you want to feel sexually. These two things can exist in the same breath. Yep, they can. Yeah, so you're whole and not broken. And at the same time, there's things to heal and transform. Mm -hmm. And so that is the journey I love to take people on, where you get to experience your wholeness, and that becomes a bigger sense of self than the brokenness of the small aspects of yourself. Yeah. And so I want to teach, and that's what I do, people to be in this wholeness, be in this grounding, be in this expansion. And from there, you do your healing journey with more pleasure, with more fun, with more consciousness that I don't need to fix myself. I just need to put myself in the right environments where I can nurture healing, if it's sexual healing, if it's financial healing. Some of yep. us need to heal ourselves financially. We need to be in environments that allow yep. us to start thriving financially instead of being in the prison of, you know, debts and 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 low frequency thinking that keeps you in limitation financially. So I feel like the more you connect to your soul and spirit, the more you choose to be around elevated people yeah. and experiences that allow you to, to transform with more pleasure, fun, and joy the things that need to be transformed inside of you yeah. and your life. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I so appreciate how you talk about stuff. Our language, though, in, in slight nuances is different. It's universal truth and the universal human experience. And and your connection to yourself and your ability to talk about it is just, in, it, it's, it's amazing. So I want to honor Thank that you. because the work that Thank you've done you, is Brian. definitely coming through you. And it's, uh, it's, it's obvious that you are a vehicle for the message that needs to be told. You know, as you, um, as you were talking about the physical body, it, it, it brought me back to a reality that today marks 50 days for me with zero physical pain after nearly 31 years of daily physical pain after my trauma. Wow. And oh I've been on a healing journey. Yeah, no, I, I'm like, I'm really. And so all of what you describe, I've been accessing, but with more interference in my physical body, sometimes that makes it more difficult to escape and and, mm -hmm. and leave my body. Right. And and that was something that I had to, to your point, fight through for a long time. I'll tell you, though, it wasn't the fighting that wanted it was surrender. Yeah, but yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what was really, really powerful. And one of the other answers that you talked about is I believe that light and dark good and bad are necessary. Contrast mm -hmm. is what brings the beauty to life. Because yes. just like you talk about, if you can't experience the connection of fuel, joy, beauty, abundance flowing through you, right? It will mean nothing if you're in the deepest, darkest place in the world and nothing to compare and contrast it to. Yes. And so how have you been able to integrate the deep contrast between light and dark within your life to extract the most meaningful lessons objectively for yourself? You know, I, first of all, I, 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 I learned from that 
early ages with my teacher to live in what he calls non-duality, yeah. which is everything comes and everything goes. Yes. Everything. This body will one day not be here. Yep. So who you are is the observer of what is, right? So you can have a day of, you know, where loads of, you have lots of money or great, but that could be gone because of whatever, bad really? decisions, some tragic thing that happens in the world that, you know, you just, you know, uh, uh, um, that just happened because it wasn't because you did necessarily anything wrong, right? So the, the, it is just like the coming and going. So yeah. once we go deeper into our true self, we start to understand that duality is a necessary part of this fabric of life on planet Earth. So we stop resisting and getting to what she said so beautifully, you start to surrender. You start to surrender to what is. Yeah, yeah. So instead of waking up in the morning and fighting against what is, you accept and you breathe and you allow to let things be as they are. And that is the, the highest form of awareness is to be like, today there's pain. Okay. Okay. And just Observe, breathe. don't judge. Breathe yep. and allow. And when the pain goes, hey, great. Breathe and enjoy that, right? Yeah. And when money comes, breathe and say, oh, a wonderful thing. And when money goes, breathe and be okay. So, yeah, it's that allowing yourself to understand you came into this world with nothing. You're going to leave with nothing. Yeah. So all this is a game. And the question is, how are you going to play that game? The more you know about consciousness, love, manifesting, freedom, all of these things, it just it just gives you that that ability to make better choices, right? So instead of spending a lot of energy going, oh my God, blah, 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 this has happened, you're just like more like, that's okay. Do I love what's happening right now? No, I do not. But yeah. does it define me? No, it doesn't. Because you are going to learn, and this is what I, my teachers taught me. I love how they put it. And I say it every single time, all the time, everyone this is one of my catchphrases. An inner peace, a love and a joy that's not dependent on external circumstances, events, or people. This is known as freedom. Yes, it freedom is. Freedom from the little coupling of the monkey mind that tries to take us into hysterical behavior based on things we cannot even um, transform. Right, so breathe and and allow allow things to be as they are. Allow things to come and go. Yeah, and just keep saying thank you if yeah. you know if it's good times. Hey, know how to lean in and enjoy. Yeah, and when the you know rougher times go, you know breathe and allow, and then you move faster through it. Yeah. that is what I've experienced. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I I really like even how you talk about that. You know, I think that everybody wants freedom. But I think it's the scariest place for most people to be because they don't have anything to anchor to external, exactly. right? And just like what you're talking about, I believe that every individual to actually have freedom has to anchor in themselves because that's also the deepest connection with themselves, their soul. And that's also how they connect into the abundant universal power that exists for all of us, right? So it's this really great thing. What I'm really curious about for you is where are you still experiencing resistance or pain in your life that you are now consciously or intentionally starting to work yourself through. We all have ebbs and flows. We all have minutes and sure. moments in that low frequency energy. Where does it sure. still show up for you? Um, that, you know, it shows up. I love this question. It shows up in, um, as you, as I'm kind of doing this work, Okay, um, I have been like getting more people onto, let's say, the Mahima mindset and, you know, putting, to, I, I need to learn things like putting together teams, how to work together with people to create this success. So I find the, the business of being in business, okay, <laughs> yeah. very challenging. Okay, if I could just sit all day under a tree and people no. would just come and sit with me 
and we would just laugh together and just feel the consciousness would be like, okay, this is love. But dealing with social media, right. um, you know, uh, sales funnels, um, bali la li la li la okay? <laughs> this is where I find myself like, okay, right? I have a, I'm learning a lot, right? Being triggered by... Um, by 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 all the the stuff that goes yeah. around with uh, being, you know, holding the space, teaching others. So you need to be an example for them. But at the same time, dealing with whatever you're dealing with inside of your own life, like uh, you know, uh, for example, during COVID, we were you know doing very well before COVID because we were an events business, and then after COVID, we. Um, couldn't go out anymore. And we yeah. needed to figure out how do we continue to thrive and send this beautiful message to more people? And then we had to start figuring out all this online stuff, right? So needing to learn about tech yeah. and, 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 oh, yeah. and this. And so, so I feel for me, that's where I feel like just life, I would say just life, nothing special, okay, um, is, is the daily grind of life is where... Yeah. Um, I feel that, yes, you need to constantly again and again remind yourself it's not important. I do this because I love to do it. Yeah. But, you know, but at the same time, I do need to make choices. And at this moment, I still choose to, to, to go on social media, even though there's parts of me that are like, I don't want to go on social media today, Brian, or tomorrow for that matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is this making sense? It makes complete sense, and I and yeah, I and I, and I yeah. deeply I deeply identify with even that answer. I mean, you know, I'm in the best rhythm of life I've ever been in, but that doesn't mean that there's not life, yeah. right? Like, I mean, we have kids, we have a seven year old and a nine year old. We like we run a business where we help people. Like, inherently, it's life. So yeah. you can be in the best rhythm, the best flow, and still have chaos all around you. But it's about learning to exist within it. And, exactly. And and so I, I would love to know because you design experiences for people. Yes. You know, you've shared the stage with some of the literally biggest names. I mean, Richard Branson, Le, uh, Les Brown, Kevin Harrington. You've you've been on some of the biggest stages in the world, moving hundreds of thousands of people throughout your career. So yeah. tell us about how you work with individuals. And I know that you guys have a three day transformational retreat where you go deep with individuals. So maybe give us some context into the work that you do and how you teach and share the lessons and wisdom that you've gathered and gained out into the world to elevate and empower them. I love that. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share. So, so we do a three day event. Um, it's a way for us to spend more time with people because ultimately we want to go on a longer journey, but of course, look, loads of things can happen in three days. Right. But I do feel that in that time we get to assess the people, they get to assess us. We get to see if we are vibing, if the strategies and techniques that we use are, you know, in alignment and, and, and we get to show you what's possible. And you get to choose us and we also get to choose you because I think it's very important that, I agree. you know, people understand this is not like, you know, I go shopping and I buy a dress. Let me come and buy, you know, Mahima's program. I feel like it's important for us to have you know, to be able to say there's certain people where we might not be the best match for, right? So, because I'm all into let's get you freaking happy that you decided to join us and make this investment in yourself, right? Yep. So I feel like the three days is a great place to come together, play, have fun, do deep, deep work. I do activations. I call them activations, meditations. So how I would describe it is like, we, we, you know, I'll, I'll teach some frameworks, okay, to get, to change your perspective about yourself and the world. And then I'll take people into journeys where we, we, we start to close the eyes, we start moving, we start breathing, we start, um, you know, speaking affirmations, we start doing things to recode their uh, kind of like spiritual DNA or, or emotional uh, uh, sense of it connection is. to themselves. So it's not just come, sit, talk. It's come, sit, talk, listen, move, um, answer powerful questions, interact with yourself and others, 
from a place of soul, from a place of yeah. empowerment. Um, I have a seven-step formula. I call it the Own Your Superstar formula, right? And that guides people. It's an award-winning formula. We have won um, some awards for this. And that is our foundation, right? We take people through, even at the three-day, this formula. People join us for longer journeys. People have joined us for, uh, you know, three months. People join us for 12 months. People have joined us for two, three years. So people on our campus, you know, having had spent uh, even five years, we've had people on our campus enjoying uh, the work because this formula is deep and it depends on how deep you want to go. Just to quickly outline, the first step is self-love. Without this, you're nowhere. You need to be able to feel comfortable Mm -hmm. in your own skin to trust yourself. To have full faith in yourself that you can stay grounded, you can stay um, uh, centered and, and open and, and, and loving and kind to yourself, even when the shit is a mm-hmm. fan. You need to have an anchor into your own personal power. And I call that the first step, which is self-love. There, you know, And we can go on deeper there. But then you take the self-love, you start listening, you give yourself permission to find your true talent. A lot of us are doing things to make money, which isn't lighting up our soul. That's right. When you love yourself enough, Brian, you start to go, no more of just surviving. I want to thrive. No more of just, I go to work and I'm happy, you know, eight hours of my life, I'm a zombie. And then I try to live afterwards. You let go of that shit and you start allowing yourself to go, no, I deserve to be doing what I love. We have people coming on and doing all kinds of pivots, right? From, you know, being in the bank to going and starting to coach people financially to, you know, and creating their own companies because they don't want to be in that bank atmosphere anymore. And then they pivot and still do what they love, but now they're on their own playing field, right? We have people who have been, you know, moms taking care of kids. And now it's like, it's time for me to, you know, do my own thing and creating companies and, and doing what they love. So it's about finding your gift. I call it your genius. That's one part. My genius is facilitating transformation, right? Taking people through transformational journeys where they come in, something happens and they go, holy crap, I have transformed. Okay. Yep. So that's my superpower. Then we figure out the mission. What do you want to do with this gift that serves humanity? It's so important, Mm -hmm. Ryan, to take your gift and do something meaningful that helps others. Now, it's not that we all have to have a world vision. No, wherever you you feel is right for you Mm -hmm. to put your attention and your talent. Yeah, your world. Exactly. So, you know, uh, I've helped uh, somebody understand that they are artists. They are artists. So then trying to go out and do other work is just Mm -hmm. not serving them. They need to do their art and they need to figure out how to monetize their art. And the only thing that's stopping them from doing that is the limiting beliefs that they have because there's so many in society about being an artist and not being able to monetize art, right? Whether art is music or or, 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 uh, fashion or whatever form of art you're talking about, why painting and so forth. So I love to have people figure out their mission that they want to, you know, like take their beauty that they have and their talent and do something meaningful. So that's your mission. That's the third step. Then we need to get over the fear because fear comes rising up when it's time to to, to change. Yeah, when it's time for the death and the rebirth, okay? <laughs> fear is there. So I help people deal with their fear so that they can stay centered and keep saying, yes, I deserve to thrive. I deserve to do what I love and I deserve all of this, right? So we deal with, I call it transcending fear. Then we need to work on your relationships. Your relationship with others is key to you being able to completely create an extraordinary life. You need to be with extraordinary people and you need to feel it. You need to feel I'm away from the toxic people and I have these people and they light me up and they encourage me. And they also like me trying to pursue a better world and have ideas that support that process. So that's my fifth element. Then the sixth element is um, embody abundance. But hold, yeah, yes, embody abundance. So to understand that you can be abundant financially with your health, 
to be deserving and worthy. You need to change something in your system or else you keep creating lack, right? So we need to understand how to create abundance on all the levels where it's important. That means getting rid, for me, on body abundance is getting rid of all the negative habits and being able to say yes to new powerful yep. habits. And then the last one is vision creation. You need to have a bigger vision that's pulling you out of bed each day. Something that is that you are creating. I call it bringing what's in the invisible to the visible. Your creator. And there's nothing more fun than having an idea, having something that you want to do, and doing it. Right? Yeah. And see, there it is. I, I, this was just a dream in my head, and now here I am. Right? For me. It was just a dream in my head to be able to travel all over the world and be in rooms and, and stand on stages with Sir Richard Branson. And there I am, I'm fucking standing on that stage, you know, and I made this happen, for, you know, from my belief in myself and being willing to be coached, yeah. have people help me hack my system to make my dreams come true. So those are the seven steps. It's a seven step formula called the Own Your Superstar Training. And through these three days, I will take you through that formula and we will hack the formula. Obviously, you know, um, for some people, it will just all be about self-love. That will be what they're going to work on on that uh, three day. For some people, they've locked that in. Now they say, "Where's I need to be more purposeful. I've been stuck in a job that doesn't serve me. So, Good. yeah. So I love this because we can all work together with this formula and, you know, whatever you want to continue doing, we have the possibility to continue on our campus and continue working on the formula. It is a game changer. So that's what I do. That's how I take people Beautiful. from wherever they are to wherever they want to go. I love okay? it. With my seven step on your superstar formula. We'll have all your links and everything for that in the show notes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for how you communicate through all these things. It's, uh, it's, it's just a pleasure to communicate with you, my friend. Um, I've, I've truly enjoyed our time together. I'm curious, do you have a, actually, I have another question before I, I go there. It just popped back into my head. I'm curious, what is your vision for the legacy that Mahima is going to leave? Oh, I love that so much. But before I say that, let me not forget one thing is okay. I have some, I have a free gift to give. Give people. it. Yeah, go. Yes. Yes. Three, you go to my website, the Mahima mindset.com. And I would say mama with a high in between, right? The Mahima mindset.com. And you're going to get three things. One is my, for free, it's my um, inner peace. Uh, it's my book called The Rebel's Guide to Inner Peace, where I'm going to give you the three strategies to start understanding what inner peace, like what does that even yeah. mean? Okay. So easy read. You're going to love it. And then I'm going to give you seven days to reprogram your mind so that you can start thinking differently about yourself and the world change some limiting beliefs that you maybe didn't even realize that you yeah. had. Okay. Cause that's at least me. I was like, what, what, what? When I started realizing yeah. all of these negative conditionings. So it's called the seven days reprogram your mind and all of these things, they take like 15 minutes a day. And then I'm going to give you my 21 day meditation oh. challenge. So you can already start to breathe and be more present in the moment and start to feel and experience yeah. yourself on a higher dimension. This is great for anybody, regardless of where you're on your journey, whether you're starting or going further. So those are the three gifts I'd just like to offer your listeners and thank them for, yeah. you know, to just being a part of uh, this conversation today because we, you know, we just need more of these conversations, Brian. And I love that you're doing this and what you are putting out into the world. It's just so awesome. Thank you, um, my friend. Yes. So coming back to the legacy, I would love to empower adults to be able to take these the seven step formula and be so passionate about it that they in their own communities and their own way start just sharing the knowledge of really? this yeah and whether they're going to be you know teach, uh, teaching children i would love to see kids learn about these seven steps at school because i think the school system would be a tremendous, yeah, yeah. tremendous um, place where people can can really learn about how to be a great human. Teenagers, like I, I don't feel it's my uh, job to work with these uh, with yeah. kids or teenagers, no? but I do feel it's my legacy to bring adults who want to work in these environments. I feel the adults same way about that. Adults who want to mm. help other adults. I want to help you. 
I want to help you to empower yourself. I see myself creating, I would love to have a hub in different cities. So in the city, you can come and be in conversation um, and have support to, to live your life with more joy, with more laughter, with more peace and harmony, however that comes. And it's also for me very important that I bring people from different walks of uh, religious backgrounds together. Hey. I feel like this is something very important for me. I agree. That so in these centers, you can be Muslim, you can be Catholic, you can be Jewish. You can be, we need to be talking about spirituality. And we need to talk a language that we can all agree with, that we can all vibe with. And maybe it's not going to be in words. Maybe it's just going to be in the meditation practice. Maybe it's going to be in how we express our beauty inside of the world. We need to be spiritually connecting to each yeah. other, regardless of our backgrounds, uh, you know, spiritual backgrounds. I'm very passionate about that. Yeah. Right. So um, there's just, uh, yeah, there's just so much I, I still want to accomplish and do, um, Brian. And uh, so thank you for asking me that question. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> and, I, I, could, I couldn't agree more with making sure that we find a way to get the world to be more connected with each other, with yes. themselves first is where it starts. And, and then it permeates outward. I think there's so many ways that our society has set up structures and systems that are divisive, that cause yes. people to believe that there's right and wrong, to fight over belief systems that they only seek further information to validate their own belief systems that further separate them from themselves. Like there's all these dynamics that exist. And to your comment earlier, it's, it's not that complicated. It just takes some intention. And so Mahima, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing your heart, bringing your soul to the show today. It was an absolute pleasure having you here. It has been a joy, joy, joy. You are an incredible human being. Um, I'm just so blessed. I really feel blessed that I've had the honor to be in your presence today. And you are just this ball of love. This is Thank just you. like this ball of love. And I feel like you pour it into everything what you do. And it permeates how you think about yourself in the world. And so, yeah. That, that, that's, that's, that's what I felt here today. I felt so much love, uh, acceptance, beauty, all of it. So thank, mwah. You. thank, thank you, you, Brian. You just thank gave you me so chills. Much. You just gave me chills and I fully received that because that's what I want everyone to feel through us because it is love. And that I think is what can diffuse all of the low frequency negative energies and emotions. But as you said so wisely, it requires you to love you first. And yes. so I'm, uh, I'm grateful. And so for all of you who tuned in and saw Mahima, Flip open her lid. Give us unbelievable wisdom. It doesn't matter where you've come from. The toxicity, the separation from parents, the sexual abuse. No matter what you've been through, if you're willing to finally take a breath and breathe in your own life to connect to your own soul and allow yourself to explore enlightenment with objectivity and non-judgment, you might, might just have a chance of living in your full power and potential. And when that happens, joy, freedom, and fulfillment will flow through you at a level that you've never experienced. And the contrast <laughs> that you've already had from the darkness in your life will allow the light to shine even brighter. But it's gonna require you to do the work. So remember, flip open your lid and scan your camp. What you can probably tell by now is that I love telling these stories, but what I love even more is the impact that's coming from them. You see, we're on a mission to impact over a billion lives as quickly as possible, but to do that, we need you. See, we believe that moved people move people. And so all I'm asking is if you've resonated, connected with any of the messaging, please consider like, commenting, sharing, leave a rating and review. Thank you so much for tuning into Flipping the Lid. And if you want more information on the show, how to become a guest, how to recommend a guest, or any of the other details, head over to flippingthelid.com. We'll see you there.